Hi, my name is Johanna and I talk about my knitting in these videos. Most of you probably know that uh, because yeah, this is probably not the first video of mine that you watch. Um, if you read the title, you kind of have an idea what the following content is going to be. It's not a regular podcast episode. Um, I went to the UK in June and yeah, I filmed a little bit, um, especially like buying a lot of yarn there and what my plans were, also like my traveling projects and some snippets of Cornwall. And even though it's been nearly six months now and uh, we are close to Christmas, I still thought it would be cool to share and maybe it's interesting to you. Uh, I mean, I have the footage and I thought why not put it out there. Um, even though it's the, it's definitely not summer anymore and yeah I haven't filmed anything since then since like I think May or June it must have been um yeah just for a little bit of context after this little intro I will film again a regular podcast episode in which I will explain a little bit why I've been gone for five months and what happened and also share of course all of my projects and whips and uh, even though I didn't film I did knit a lot so uh, there's definitely a lot to show um yeah I got a lot of like nice comments for my holidays after my last podcast episode so thank you for that and uh, since I won't put much editing into um, the following video you will find all the information um, about the yarn in the show notes or description box however you call it and i won't put it on the screen just if you're curious what the yarn is called and where you can find it um, and what i'm planning and doing with the yarn i bought in the uk you will see in my next podcast episode and i hope you enjoy my little travel knitting diary thingy. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so this is probably going to be the start of my travel vlog or however I'm going to call it. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow for the UK um, and I thought I will maybe, not sure yet, but maybe take you with me and for my um, knitting journey part. <laughs> I don't know, show some clips of Cornwall might as well, um, but also my yarn haul, which I'm planning, <laughs> or more or less I'm planning to buy a lot of yarn and I thought I might do the yarn haul there already and uh, not film it afterwards. afterwards. And I'm at the moment, um, winding up all my yarn so before i do that uh, and it's all only in hank no in uh, cake form i thought i show it to you so yeah if you are new here or haven't figured out that i'm going on holiday um so yeah i'm traveling from northern germany to cornwall by train which is all in all, I think, a 17, 17 <laughs> hour train ride, which is insane. Um, but yeah, I am really into train rides. I really like it. I'm really excited to travel with the Eurotrain and uh, yeah, I hope everything goes well. I grew up that way, that way, like we only went on holiday by public transport, so it's like like a normal thing for me but i think it could also be the longest train ride i'm not doing it all at once i'm leaving tomorrow first of first for my dad's place so i go to hamburg and from there on i take the train up to london uh through um i think cologne brussel uh yeah 
Brussels? Is it Brussels? No, I don't know. Brussels. <laughs> um, and yeah, then to London. And I stay there for a night. And then the next day, I take the train from London, London to uh, Cornwall. And yeah, and the second part of the holiday, I will be in Brighton. So it's another train ride back from Falmouth to um, from from Falmouth and Cornwall back to. Brighton, from Brighton to London then, and from London back all the way to Northern Germany. So I have a lot of knitting time ahead of me. So that's also the reason why I really don't mind train rides that much. I Yeah, I, I'm very much used to them. I like them. They are productive time for me. For example, I wrote my bachelor thesis in trains <laughs> because uh, I was kind of homeless homeless at that point so I traveled a lot between friends and my parents place and yeah the main part I wrote in a train <laughs> so yeah I don't know I associate good things with it and obviously it's great for the environment if you don't you, if you aren't flying I considered flying but uh, I wasn't saving that much time with flying because I had to take the train from London to um, Cornwall anyways and if you have to be really early at the airport etc check in check out you don't really save that much time um also you are limited with luggage <laughs> um when you fly with a plane and you're not when you travel by a uh, train or at least I'm, I think you are kind of limited when you, you um when you take the Euro train but I think I'm fine. I think you have like two big luggage pieces or something and I only have one. So we're good. But yeah, so I really thought about what I wanted to knit because since I want to buy there so much yarn, I don't really want to take a big project with me because yeah, then I don't have space for yarn, for the new yarn. And also I know that like I kind of can immediately knit with something else that I buy there. Uh, also, I really didn't want to have like a big stocking head project or something because, yeah, I kind of want to be entertained <laughs> during the train ride. I mean, when do you have so many hours just like knitting time where you can really focus on a pattern? So I really wanted to take an advantage of that. And yeah, and I wanted to kind of travel light. So what I originally wanted to knit was uh, like an elegant t-shirt with maybe a lace detail or something. I really like the t-shirts by Lynette, um, like the palm and the peacock tee. Or she also brought like the two new ones um, out. I think one is called the clover tee and the muslin tee or something. I really, really like them. I wish I could knit them, but they are all a DK gauge. And the yarn I have in stash, I couldn't meet gauge <laughs> for that. I also considered knitting the shorty by Anne Wenzel, but um, yeah, the longer I looked at it, the more I really didn't like it. And also I feel kind of uncomfortable um, yeah, supporting the designer with buying patterns from her if there are other options for me which I could replace that pattern with. So I really went on a search to find a pattern um, which would work for me and I will insert the picture and the name because I haven't remembered it yet but it has like a circular yoke um, lace detail and I think it's a uh, kind of a sweater pattern but you can knit it also with short sleeves and that was what I had in mind and yeah I think uh, I'm really curious I never knitted a lace yoke before I mean I knitted lace socks before but yeah this is, looks way more advanced um, so I'm really excited and I think that's like perfect for hours of hours of train ride like working through that chart and the yarn I want to knit it with is um, BC Garns Baby Alpaca. Um, I got this um, last year, I think, in Berlin, at Wollen Berlin. And I originally planned to knit something like, 
Yeah, bak balaklava, is it balaklava? There's also the Turkish food that sounds nearly the same. I think one is baklava and one is balaklava. I'm not sure, but like the hooded head kind of thing with a like additional scarf, that was the plan. But at that time, I didn't really have the time and head capacity, brain capacity to um, knit that pattern. So I kind of put it on hold and just left the yarn in my stash. I have three skeins of this and this is like 250 meters per 50 grams. So I have 750 meters, uh, which gives me enough for a t-shirt or should be give me enough for a t-shirt. Um, but since this is 100% alpaca, it's very drapey. So I don't know how well you can see. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is this is why I wanted to show it to you before I um, cake everything up. But yeah, so it's very soft and very drapey. And to give it some more structure, I thought I combined it with uh, cotton yarn. And for Anna Wenzel's pattern, the shorty, she combined also, I think, um, Isiga, Isiga uh, alpaca with... Um, lace lace cotton yarn or lace linen yarn so i thought i would do the same at that point i still thought i would knit that pattern which i decided against now but i got this yarn and this is probably the thinnest yarn i worked with it's more like a thread it's actually i think crochet yarn it says like anchor frezia no idea what it is um i have the label somewhere but probably nobody knows it anyways but yeah it said it is like crochet yarn it runs like 50 grams 285 meters so yeah it's a lace weight and yeah i will hold these two together for the t-shirt and i knitted a swatch and I think I will go down in needle size. I hope this is long enough, but this is kind of the fabric. I can't go closer because otherwise um, it won't focus, but you kind of can see that it is slightly marbled because they are not the colors are not identical. Like they are really, really close, uh, but this one is more shiny. So it kind of uh, peeks out out of the fabric. And also it is more beige, beige and this is more like silver gray. So yeah, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the mar marble, marling, um, but I think it's all right. And I don't really have a different option to combine the yarn. Uh, I knitted this teeny tiny gauge swatch. I blocked it also, but this teeny tiny gauge swatch on um, four millimeter needles. And I think I will go down to 3.5 and I think my my gauge is kind of like 25 stitches or something um which should work for the pattern that I decided to knit so yeah I will wind everything up and take it with me the good thing is like these like these are really really tiny uh cakes because the alpaca is very very thin I mean it's a fingering weight yarn for example, if you look at this, this is like a DK, heavy DK yarn, how small this little cake is. So that was also the reason why I said like, okay, this is perfect for traveling. It doesn't take up that much space in my backpack. Um, so it should be fine. And I only need three of the alpaca skeins and three also of these little cotton balls. Um, also, uh, I will take my vest number one with me uh, because I was planning to have it finished until now and it's not even halfway finished. But I'm hoping that tonight and with all day of tomorrow, I can finish it and then I can take it with me. So this yarn I'm only taking to my dad's place and leave it there, all like everything that is left over and ho hopefully have a finished vest which I can take to 
my holiday then. Um, I also have a head project somewhere lying around. I probably showed you that one as well. Yeah, I did in, in my last podcast episode. But um, yeah, that's also like if I get bored or not bored probably, but like if I need a break <laughs> from all of uh, that lace shard, I can just knit my two by two ripped head. And that's kind of like... Uh, more mindless project um otherwise yeah i'm not taking any yarn with me because there's like just for the train ride and for my way to my first night in london i need a knitting project but from there on i think i will have new yarn <laughs> and um yeah i can show you and talk with you about the yarn that i'm planning to get so I really want to have a dark navy yarn for cardigan number seven, I think it is. It's uh, it's yeah my favorite my favorite things that were really simple, very plain, but I think that's actually something I really really need in my wardrobe. And yeah, they have like the yarn store I'm eyeing or <laughs> what I'm like where I'm planning to get most of my yarn is uh, Stitches and Cream in Falmouth. They also have a YouTube channel, which I re recommended before. And they specialize kind of in um, British yarns. So they have a lot of options and that's something I value a lot. And yeah, so I'm planning to find yarn for that. So that's going to be a huge amount of yarn. I'm also planning to knit the mosaic sweater by Knitting for Olive. Wait a minute. And so the contrasting color I'm planning to use for that is this very, very beautiful uh, sagey dark green by, excuse me, um, Wool and Twine. I got this last year, I think, or in the beginning of the year, when she started to dye like greens and blues now and or more um before that she had like really pale greens only so this is the color forest on bfl mesh and four ply and it is like one skein is 400 meters and i'm planning to hold this actually double because um these skeins have a slight difference and so i would have if I would have needed only with this yarn, I would have needed to find a pattern where I can uh, like alternate skeins. Or I mean, you can alternate skeins everywhere. But I thought like I just like fixed the problem or like the easiest fix is to hold them just double. And because that would actually meet the gauge for the mosaic sweater. So I really want like a light base color, but it's kind of hard because um, this is like not a really saturated green, it's more of a, like a dusty dark green, I would say. So holding it, for example, with like a beige like that, it makes it all a little bit muddy in my for my taste. So I would need more of a contrast color, which is not like so much gray or so much um, beige. Or something more like in the direction of a white but also not like I think a yellow white would look kind of not good with this so more of like a cream or a true white we will see but I yeah that's the aim so to find the base color for this color work sweater um, so I can start knitting this in autumn and what I'm also planning, and I think this meant I mentioned in my podcast before, because I got the also the undyed Heritage DK by Wool and Twine, which is like this beautiful mild beige color, like OT color. And I want to knit the probably the Cialta uh, sweater. Um, and I need at least two or three contrast colors for that. And I think that's kind of like. I think that's one of the things I'm the most excited for because you can just actually pick like real colors, not like cream or gray or beige or something, but like really popping colors. 
which are British yarns and yeah so these are the projects I'm shopping for uh, and yeah so everything else <laughs> that uh, what is it meets my eye or I'm intrigued by I might get as well. I also think I might get like socks gains from uh, Sakami or Telling Yarns because both of these hand dyers I really like what they're doing but yeah they are not accessible in Germany for me so I saw that uh, Stitches and Cream also stashes them so I might get like one sock skein of hand dyed yarn and also I have kind of a sad story to share. I had like not the best week rule wise if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen it but I lost my favorite knitted sweater. Um, I mean not all hope is lost yet but I'm realistic right now and don't think I will get it back at all. So I lost it a week over a week ago two weeks ago on the train and yeah or I mean I, I was on holiday and I went home by train and a week later when I cleaned up my apartment I realized that the sweater is not here the last time I had it was on our holiday place and probably in the train so it might be that it's still lying at that holiday place I mean it's a friend's house and they're checking right now but they haven't been there in the last two weeks but i can't imagine that i forgot it there i'm pretty sure i put it on the back of my backpack and probably during my train ride i um yeah i opened my backpack and put my um sweater to the side and forgot to take it with me um yeah it's really really sad i tried to find it i uh, put in what is it like um, announcement on the not an announcement but you can like with the German train side you can like put in an I will put in the word um, <laughs> Anzeige um, so that you lost something but they already mailed me that they haven't found anything I will, tomorrow I will try at one of the train stations where they might have kept it but probably someone took it and yeah it's really really sad uh, but I'm trying to be optimistic like first of all I can re-knit that sweater even though obviously it took me a lot of time and it wasn't I mean it took some money as well but I like the beauty of knitwear is you can always remake it and like in my head somebody else got this sweater who might need it more than me um, because I can always make myself more beautiful sweaters but a lot of other people can't so I hope it keeps someone wa warm and happy so I don't know I think I found my peace with it but I was kind of devastated last week I also had a like washing accident uh, because I put on a lot of my store-bought sweaters and hand knitted socks into wool wash program and yeah never before never like before that day everything came out the way i put it in so never it never happened to me that something shrunk or something so but this time i managed to accidentally felt two of my favorite sweaters um they're actually both the wearable for me i stretched them out quite a lot because they are both quite oversized so they are not totally lost but they are def definitely different sweaters now and also with the felting they like are really dense and have a weird structure now but i still can wear them it's just not my oversized men's sweater anymore and get me that one The one thing that didn't survive is this knitted socks. Um, all of my other socks, I think all of my hand knitted socks were in that washing machine. And um, 
surprisingly all of them survived even the ones that weren't super wash yarn so i'm very impressed but this <laughs> alpaca sock yarn which had like really pretty lace on it didn't survive like it's i can't even open it all the way anymore and it's like teeny tiny and very stiff so yeah that's a lost cause but yeah so it hasn't been my greatest week but <laughs> i'm for two weeks now on holiday so i'm trying to look forward and not be so sad about my sweaters um so i might also get like some grayish beige yarn to re-knit that sweater or knit another sweater i don't know i need to see how much i can carry and what my bank account gives and now i already talked like for 24 minutes okay that's going to be interesting hello hello from the uk this is where the travel vlog starts <laughs> and kind of ends <laughs> i mean um yeah so as i announced i am in cornwall right now and i'm really enjoying it in the back you see my little tiny house that i rented for the time being and yeah i had a great holiday so far and as promised i went yarn shopping in Falmouth, and yeah i'm really enjoying my holiday alone <laughs> i was quite curious if this is actually something I do like because beforehand I never went on a longer period of holiday uh, on my own. So this is quite cool. But um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, especially because you don't have to compromise on anything. You can just do whatever you feel like doing. And in my case, that's a lot of knitting and uh, yarn shopping, eating and hiking or sitting in nature basically knitting in nature is probably the right word yeah i've been so far i've been on hikes and i went to the city center and had a stroll around through the shops been to some cafes and my little tiny house has like a teeny tiny terrace uh, but it's enough space for me and i love sitting on there and knitting in the evenings it's the train passing <laughs> um, and yeah just enjoying a cool beer and the weather has been great so far today is the first day that's been quite cloudy and tomorrow is as well which is kind of sad because i wanted to go on a hike tomorrow which i'm not doing anymore i think instead i think i will spend just uh, the last day in cornwall in the city just in a cafe maybe knitting and maybe go back to the yarn store <laughs> otherwise the weather has been really great it's been like um like this perfect weather weather where you can still wear a sweatshirt a woolly sweatshirt but with shorts <laughs> and that's my favorite outfit and my favorite weather like i love shorts uh and i love woolly sweaters as we all but um, like being able to wear both at the same time is just the best um, so yeah it's really interesting because I mean uh, where I'm staying it's directly at the coast as well and it's really windy here um, but the wind is really warm so that's quite different to to where I live in northern Germany because when it's windy it's like cools down immediately but today i went on a hike to a castle and on that hill of that castle it was quite exposed it was very very windy but it was like a warm tropical wind and i needed to get rid of my sweater and could just wear a thin shirt like that it was quite weird for me <laughs> um but yeah I've been really enjoying the weather, I've been really enjoying the nature and the landscape, I'm a huge fan of it, like the the rough cliffs, uh, we don't really have that in Germany and yeah, I've also been yarn shopping and I also finished two objects, I can just show them short, uh, shortly, because, but I think in my next podcast episode you will see them anyways. Uh, this morning I finished my vest number one 
with the Held Hold Wood Spinnery yarn. And I took this project only with me because I wanted to be able to wear it. I thought I could finish it before, but it took me some time, but uh, I wasn't in a rush or anything. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very pleased with how it looks. The only weird thing is it is way too short for me <laughs> and I've knitted it to exactly the measurements of my favorite things knitwear uh, pattern. So it is weird that it doesn't fit me because I have a very small upper body. I don't know if it would have been maybe longer if I had smaller boobs or something, but I don't know. It's quite, uh, quite tight and quite short so but it's not blocked yet but this is quite rustic wool i don't know if this is going to block out at all that much because i didn't uh, knit a swatch before so we're going to see otherwise i will probably lengthen it i still have a lot of like yeah i think i still have 50 grams left uh, that i left at home i'm very like impressed with myself because i haven't like the ribbing at the body and the ribbing of the sleeves uh, weren't finished and I estimated how much yarn I would need for all of it and took the perfect amount of yarn with me I was like oh my god <laughs> this is a skill <laughs> this is a life skill so I have nothing left of that yarn um, but yeah I will try to wear it tomorrow uh, without blocking and um, see if I still like the fit but I think I need to widen and lengthen it uh, with blocking uh, or otherwise add some length uh, by knitting with it. The other thing I finished is another hat and this one was already half um, finished when I took it with me. It's just a very basic two by two ripped head but it is the, with the special wool um it's the tweet recycled by sun is um i still haven't edited my last podcast episode where i talked quite uh, long about this yarn but um yeah i'm liking it so far this also needs a block it's quite tight fitting at the moment this time i didn't uh fold over the brim and sewed it together i just knitted a long tube and then started my decreases and then i can just um fold it inside to the brim however i want it to sit so yeah very pleased with both of them uh, i might block them when i'm in brighton because i'm leaving on sunday um i don't know if i mentioned this already um, but yeah, I'm here for five days and then in, in Cornwall and then I'm going to Brighton for three and a half or four days. But the la fourth day I'm leaving already. Um, yeah, and I'm also going to go to Yarn and Knitting, Yuck. It's the yarn store in Brighton there and check out what they have. So, but I've been to Stitches and Cream and I will go tomorrow again. <laughs> but what I've got so far. So first is already something that I have already on my needles. And if you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen it. Um, I got some hand dye Cornish sock yarn. And I lost the second tag of it. Ah, here it is. So... Yeah, this beautiful skein is dyed by the camel's yarn inspired by Cornwall. And it's basically yarn that uh, the colors are inspired by Cornish landscape, I would say. And I will butcher this name, Marasian, Marasian, Marasian. I have no idea, Marasian. I think it's a city at the south coast. And I think it's also the one that is... Um, directly in front of St. Michael's, St. Michael's, um, which is like a castle island kind of thing. Um, it's really, really cool. I haven't been 
there this holiday but i've been i've seen it nine years ago so yeah it's a really really cool place and i watched some documentaries about it and yeah this colorway is inspired by it and i think it kind of uh, fits very well it has like i think it com yeah now you can see it it has like some sagey greens blues a lot of different blues but also some olive brownish colors in it uh, i think it washes out a little bit i will put in the picture of this game before it was caked up and yeah it's a standard sock four ply fingering weight with 75 superwash merino and 25 percent nylon and that's the really cute little label and i already started knitting with it because i wanted uh, since i finished my head i didn't have like a travel project anymore I mean, I have my Lotus shirt, Lotus sweater, um, but that's like a complicated lace project. So I don't take that on hikes for me. That's more for train rides. So I wanted just something easy to carry around. And yeah, so that's how it's looking. Knit it up so far and I'm really, really liking it. Like usually I'm not that much into um, like, is this even speckled? I don't know, indie dyed yarns, uh, which with, well, yeah, some variegation, variegation is this probably, but I wanted, uh, yeah, a sock to remember, and I also like that it had a color, or the color was inspired by where I was going on holiday, so it will always, it will be a nice memory of my Cornwall trip, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it, and I think it's quite for some variegation and still a very uh, muted color, I guess. So it's like not like crazy colorful colors, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, I also got a second hand dyed uh, sock skein and I'm really, really excited about this. But yeah, I wanted to knit the Cornwall sock in Cornwall or while I'm still in Cornwall or started at least. and keeping that for at home this is so so pretty so it is by telling yarns and i was really really planning on getting either way from sakami yarns or from telling yarns um hand dyed sock skein and this one is not my typical colorway i mean i'm usually not that big on pinks and purples and it has some like peachy colors as well uh, but I really really liked it and it was also the only one that um, was from based on one of the Game of Thrones characters uh, this is based on one of the dragons Melise I'm not sure if I'm saying that right but yeah so I, I'm since I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan I really really wanted that and I think it's so so damn pretty um like the way she dyes it it's so beautiful i was kind of sad they didn't have a lot of options um so i wish they had more but still i found this game which i really really liked so it's a hand dyed yarn british sock 60 percent uh exmoor blue face and 20 percent corridale and 10 percent Swabless, swabbles i don't know how you say that and 10 percent nylon and yeah it's four ply fingering weight and it also spun in the uk and i'm really really looking forward to have these socks um also like you can really this has like a really i think you can see the fibers there yeah it has quite a strong halo while this one doesn't really have that kind of halo I'm really interesting for a sock wool it's quite rustic um, so yeah that's that um, the other things I got uh, I mean I had some plans going in there but I I would say half of these plans went out the window <laughs> so I was planning to get some sock wool from telling yarns to knit socks and i was also planning on getting um yarn for the seolta sweater and um getting some of the color work element uh, colors and 
I got these. <laughs> um, so there's also one color missing, which they didn't have. And I need to find some of that at home. But what I'm planning on is basically a color combination like this one. So I want to have, I will insert a picture of the Seal sweater again, but I want to have like red sails and the blue stripes and the light blue stripes in the middle. And then some parts are still going to be yellow and some are dark blue. I don't know which one yet, but they didn't have like a woolen spun red yarn in that color. So I will get that one when I'm home again. I mean, I don't even know when I will find the time to start the sweater. But these are all very, very different yarns. And probably I need not a lot of them and have some left for other color work projects. Or I don't know, probably for hats, they are kind of too scratchy. But who knows what I will do with the rest. Um, so the first color is Blacker Yarns Cornish Garden Sport. And yeah, it's like this blueberry <laughs> blueberry blue, which I was always talking about, which I really, really like. Um, it says sport yarn, but with 100 grams and 212 meters, I would say it's a, um, it's a DK. Um, so, and I guess I'm pretty sure it's woolen spun because they had mainly woolen spun. The other color, the yellow, is again by Talon Yarns, but this one is her uh, DK. Um, but and it's a different combination as well. It's like 50% Exmo Blue Face, 30% Blue Face Leicester, and 20% Wensleydale Romney, but also spun in the. Um, UK and the colorway is golden rot. I really really like that yellow. It reminds me of the yellow that I have a, the vest in. And does this have a color name? Ah, no. Ah, the color is tree bar. Tree bar, uh, which is actually the garden that I went yesterday to. So I didn't know that <laughs> because I got but got the yarn before I went to the garden. So that's really, really cool. Uh, don't really know why it's called Treba because there are not a lot of blues in Treba Garden, but who knows? But really, really liking these two colors. I mean, they're one of my favorite colors. And I really liked a dark navy blue with it as well, but I couldn't find like a dark navy blue there in a DK weight. So I got Garfina Pentland Organic Romney Lamb's Wool. And this is in the shade blazer and this is like a fingering four ply um 100 organic romney lamb's wool from wiltshire england and yeah it runs 170 meters on 50 grams so it's more like a fingering sport weight i would say so that was also the reason why i got two skeins of it to hold it double I might have uh, gotten away with only one skein holding a double, but I wasn't sure. And it's also a lovely color, so I just got two. So this is going to be my color palette for the Seolta sweater. And the base color is going to be Heritage by Wool and Twine. So I'm really looking forward to knitting this in the coming months. Who knows when I will find the time. And then I kind of went off rail. Is it how you say that? Um, yeah, I kind of dismissed my plans because um, the background color for the mosaic sweater, I couldn't find a really well fitting light color. And I couldn't also find a DK worsted uh, dark navy blue for the cardigan number seven. Uh, so, and it's also kind of a basic color. I can find it uh, somewhere in Germany as well. I don't need to find it here. So uh, I kind of like looked what else spoke to me and it was this one. <laughs> and this is so beautiful. Like 
Can you see all these tweedy bits? I think it's blowing out quite a lot. Yeah, this is more of the color, but it has like, like, I think they come off quite orange, but I would say they are like more of a rust and dark brown, light gray, beige, light yellow speckles, or not speckles because it's not hand dyed, but 3D nips, nips are they called uh, in it. And it's the fi from the Fiber Co. Uh, light Aaron Moore. Uh, Donical Heritage, a Tweedy blend of fine merino wool, cashmere and silk. So very, very fancy. So it has 80% wool, 10% silk and 10% cashmere made in Ireland. And it's kind of like a DK sport weight, I would say, or light DK. And I think it's also wool and spun. Um, I'm really, really liking this. This is so pretty um yeah this is so cool uh i have four skeins which will give me enough for a sweater quantity and i'm pretty sure i'm going to make myself the guernsey Genser by sander Skan, which i'm currently making for a friend and i'm really liking that pattern i'm really liking how it looks and since i couldn't afford to make it in this yarn but i really like the um tweedy look of it um in the magazine i was really intrigued to make it in this yarn which is pretty similar to the men's edition in the magazine but i think it has more like different colored nibs in it and yeah i'm really curious they had like really pretty other colors uh, from this kind of yarn in like a light blue uh, and also like in a cream color and i'm considering getting some <laughs> when i go back tomorrow because i felt like okay i don't need this yarn twice in two um different colors because i didn't want to buy another sweater quantity of that but maybe i'm getting just like two skeins of this and make myself a vest I'm not sure, but 600 meters might be not enough. Then I need three again, and then it's quite a lot. I'm not sure yet, but I'm thinking of going back tomorrow and getting more yarn because there's some yarn that I still couldn't like stop thinking about. And I mean, I spent already like one to two hours in that store. Uh, I have to say it was such a pleasant yarn store experience. I mean, I've talked about it before that like in a lot of yarn stores, you kind of um, get like, kind of feel, or I feel kind of like attacked by the staff, uh, yeah, staff who's working there. But the woman who worked there, uh, she just asked me once if I need any help. And I said like, no, thank you. If I need some, I will come to you and she just continued doing her job and let me do my thing and I definitely took some time to find the colors for the color work sweater and yeah I chatted at the end with her she caked up my um, sock wool for me so I can knit it on the trip and it was really really nice experience so if you ever are in the area yeah, I would really, really re uh, recommend checking them out. The small city of Farmouth is very cute. There are a lot of nice food places in there. And yeah, the wool, um, the wool selection was also great. So yeah, I'm considering to get maybe more of the Tweedy yarn or they also had like some light gray yarn which i'm thinking of getting i thought like oh i don't need to get like gray yarn i can get gray yarn here as well because it's not that special or like natural gray yarn but why not get it here <laughs> uh, it doesn't really make a huge difference um, but will have some special memory uh, with, for me and yeah, since I just shrunk one of my sweaters in gray sweaters in the washing machine and lost my knitted sweater, um, I could definitely treat myself to some gray yarn to remake a gray sweater. So I'm still considering that. 
but we will see i see you tomorrow <laughs> with all my new purchases and yeah uh there's not that much i'm considering buying in brighton because uh, they don't have that much of like british yarns that i'm into uh, they have more international yarns um but we will see maybe they have some in store which i wasn't aware of and let's see what i got tomorrow <laughs> Hi there um so i'm back in my flat in germany as you maybe recognize it and yeah my holiday is basically over tomorrow i'm going back to work and i kind of forgot to film <laughs> during the rest of my trip to england um yeah i was kind of lazy i have to say um like after five days it got really really hot so um yeah when i left cornwall it got like like i mean really really hot <laughs> maybe not but like um when i went to brighton it was like 28 degrees which is way out of my comfort zone and i wasn't really fe feeling like filming and also, I realized I don't really feel comfortable uh, filming in public. So, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. I think um, it makes you look especially touristy <laughs> running around with your phone and taking pictures or videos. And I really don't like being recognized as a tourist. So. I always feel a little bit silly and try to reduce um, running around with your phone as much as possible. Um, that's also the reason why I got an, or I mean, I didn't get it, but my dad had an analog camera, which I prefer for taking pictures on holidays or trips. Um, so you don't run around with your phone and look at your phone all the time. And also I feel like most of the pictures that you take with your phone, you never really look at them again. But I took like some short clips um, of like Cornwall, uh, which I will probably insert. And I um, definitely took some pictures of all the places where I knitted um, that I found really, really funny, especially while I was in England. There, it was the um, uh, public knitting day or a public day or something and I mean I do that all the time but especially on that trip I were on a lot of I, I went to a lot of public places and knitted there and with a lot of amazing views like uh, I went to a castle and knitted on top of the hill looking over the bay of Falmouth um, also during hiking i stopped on like some benches and knitted and looking at the sea and it was really really beautiful also in my second part of the trip when i went to brighton i went to see the national park of the seven sisters which are these like white chalk cliffs and i mean they are like just breathtaking and i sit on top of these like chalk cliffs and knitted on there as well and also like in the tourist information center where there was like a really nice coffee and lunch place and yeah so my knitting seen a lot of england and 
I also bought some more yarn since the last clip I filmed. Um, I kind of announced that, that I wanted to go back to Stitches and Cream in Falmouth to get some more yarn and I also did that. Um, it was a really, really lovely day. I spent some time in a really nice coffee place and then went into the yarn store and also did like some secondhand shopping afterwards and walked along the coast back to my Airbnb. So a really lovely day. And what I decided to get was, um, this is the label. Um, I don't know if that's, what's the actual brand name. I think it might be that, Hurt. And that's not the yarn. Um, but it's like 100% Blue Face Lester. And it has like really a uh, small footprint because it only runs like it is 150 miles from the field where the sheep graze to where the fiber is produced and completely natural. So it says like sustainable heritage yarn using the finest fleeces from, uh, I guess, North Wales or Northwest England. N NW England and it is 110 meters per 50 gram in the color mist and um, so it's a DK kind of yarn and I got 10 balls of it so it should be enough for a sweater and also this smells so sheepy and even though no, it's not, I wouldn't say it's rustic. It feels more like a merino wool. I don't have that much experience with BFL because it's not, I think it's not that common of a yarn here in Germany if you buy regional wool. I think the, the sheep race, uh, sheep breed isn't like, doesn't survive here in Northern Germany very well. Like the climate is very rough. And so yeah, and it's like these, this really pretty heavered um, beige and if you know me I already own some yarn in that color this is like my favorite color color um, so and I as I mentioned in the beginning of this video I shrunk one of my jumpers and store-bought jumpers but it was in exactly this color and uh, so I thought like okay I can I can really need I'm really in need of a new sweater in this color and I'm not sure what I'm gonna knit with it I'm pretty sure it's wool and spun and but this is going to be definitely a one colored sweater because I got a whole um, sweater amount of it and I already have a lot of color work projects uh, planned, so I don't want to add more. Um, on the other hand, I also thought doing maybe some textured knitting, but I also do a lot of textured knitting already. So I'm not sure yet um, what this is going to become other than just a sweater. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious how this is going to knit up because it's very, very soft and but it's like not a merino at the same time. So I'm really interested how this is going to um, knit up. And I think the label is also really, really cute and it just smells so good. Um, but yeah, I think that's something for future me. And in Brighton, I also went to the yarn store uh, there, Yak uh, or Y. AK yarn and knitting. On my first day there, they were um, closed, so that was kind of sad, but I went there on my last day. Uh, all in all, I have to say, I wasn't really a fan of Brighton. Um, not really my kind of city, uh, but I'm also a very judgmental person when it comes to cities. I mean, I studied urban planning, so my yeah, my expectations are quite high and there are like certain things that I really, really like uh, or which I think makes the city really nice to stay or to walk around and I felt like Brighton wasn't really my thing. Um, so I tried to, um, yeah, do trips out of Brighton, so to the Southland Sisters and to the countryside and um, 
yeah, kind of avoid the touristy part of uh, Brighton, like general, like this hippie-esque vibe uh, and very touristy and party vibe wasn't really my thing. And also it was really like quite warm while I was there. So that added to me not enjoying the city that much. But um, yeah, I definitely seen some parts and I don't regret going there. I especially like the the trip to the national park was amazing. Um, maybe insert some pictures of it. And yeah, so, but I also went to yarn and knitting and got some more wool. And I was originally planning to get the some Tweedy yarn by Studio Donegal. Um, and they had like one amazing dark gray color with like brown and green uh, Tweedy bits in it. And I really considered getting it, but in the end I decided against it because I already got a Tweedy yarn. And in the Scandinavian yarn store that is close to me here in Germany, um, they also carry um, not Studio Gonigal, but very similar Tweedy yarn. So I thought I would get something else. And what I got was, I'm, I mean, I'm really happy with my purchase, but in the end, I should have gotten it in Germany and not in the UK, which was really, really stupid of me. Um, so what I got in the end is, um, can you see that? Yes. So it's called Erica Knight uh, Wool Local, 100% wool, born in Britain, and it is fingering weight. So 100 grams are 450 meters. And I got these three colors. And I think that's actually what sold me because they were hanging next to each other. And I really liked the color ranges. Uh, they reminded me really of uh, the colors that wool and twine is dye, is like plant dyeing. And like they are like very soft heathered colors. I don't know how well you can see that, especially like these two. This is like a really interesting color. It's like this really trendy kind of uh, yellowish pale green, but very desaturated. And this is like a yeah desaturated rust and just the flavor navy. Um, also got a second skein of the navy. So I'm planning again a color work sweater with this. I had like immediately a picture in mind, but not a specific pattern. So let's see, uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be. I need to find um, uh, mohair, I think to knit it with because I'm not really into knitting a fingering sweater. Um, also, I'm not sure if this might peel a lot if I would only, excuse me, only knit it with a fingering weight if, with just that wool. But what got me confused <laughs> in the yarn store already was like, it said like Erica Knight, born in Britain, and I researched uh, the yarn before I got there and it said like it's a typical like it's a British yarn so and I was all about British yarns when I was there so and when I looked at the label it said like Kempke Handelsgesellschaft GmbH am Kanal uh, Germany Garbets so what like the um, company that is written down here is a German company and I was like wait and I mean Kremke so yarn is like a is a yarn that I know of and I was really confused that it had like a German company written on the yarn that's supposed to be British and I was like mm, that's weird <laughs> maybe they bought the yarn or the yarn brand or something but I decided to get it anyways and the um and then, and I also didn't have like reception, was it reception? No, yeah, I, I couldn't like Google stuff in the yarn store. And um, afterwards I found out that it's like a brand that you easily can get in Germany and it's way cheaper here than as well. Um, I don't know if it's just British yarn, but it's spun and um, 
in Germany, but somehow I could have gotten easier access to it in Germany and a lot cheaper as well. So this wasn't the smartest purchase, but I'm still happy with the purchase because I think in Germany I would be a lot of like more hemmed is it the right word? I'm much more restricted with my yarn purchases uh, in comparison to when I'm on holiday. So yeah, the colors, I just saw that they have color names. Uh, so this is Bingley Navy, the navy one. Um, this is Ingleton and this is Cranfield. So very pretty yarn names. So yeah, but I'm really, really excited uh, for that sweater combi or color combination for a sweater and I mean it's all too good news that it's so easily accessible to me in Germany so I can like if I need more yarn which I don't think so but if that's the case I can just easily get some extra so yeah <laughs> that was kind of a fail uh, a happy purchase but kind of like a, not the smartest choice um, so yeah I think getting that mohair for these colors uh, will be on my to-do list for like autumn, but I'm not in a hurry to knit that up. Um, they're just going to get go into my yarn collection. The last thing that I got in Yak is the soak, uh, yarn soap. And I think, yeah, I think it's a pretty popular brand. And I really wanted to try out like this leaf in soap for yarn or wool so i don't have to uh, wash it out afterwards and i got it in the um scent lacy i'm not really 100 percent 100 percent sure if it's like really my scent because i'm pretty sensitive to scents um but it's not that i don't like it but maybe i should have just gotten the uh, unscented one um, but yeah maybe in the future I will get if I like generally the soap I will get a bigger bottle but I really wanted to try it out and I've never seen it in the yarn store before so that was a purchase of mine as well all in all I had a really nice holiday really enjoyed it got a lot of yarn I really had a huge bag um, of yarn with me on my trip back. I couldn't even fit it in my suitcase anymore. It was really convenient on my long train ride back because I just could put it, um, use it as a pillow, um, which yeah was really convenient. And my, especially like all the train, run, train rides were really smooth. I had like no problems transitioning. Also like with the Euro train, it was quite easy. I mean, I had like a lot of like over an hour at least transfer time at each at each tra train station so that was quite generous but um in the end yeah that was a smart decision i would say especially since the german trains are kind of unreliable <laughs> um and are often late but yeah i i really uh, had no problems it was a nice trip and i really enjoyed my time in south england and yeah i still haven't um edited my latest podcast episode so i'm planning on doing that tonight also might edit this one and um hopefully put at least one up um and but now it's like really sunny and nice outside so i will probably take my knitting to the park i also have um, a lot of garments blocking right now i will insert a clip of um, my lotus t-shirt which was my traveling project or one of my traveling projects and i mid blocked it now to see how long the t-shirt is because it has like a alpaca content so i wasn't sure how much it's growing i also blocked my vest and my hat and I also nearly finished my pair of sock with the Cornish yarn that I started in Cornwall. So I had a lot of like knitting time and progress and uh, feel, yeah, pretty relaxed and happy, but also was really excited to come back to all my sweater projects that are lying here. This morning I watched all a few uh, podcast episodes and knitted on my Guernsey Genser. So yeah, I think generally like, 
comparison to before my holiday where I was quite stressed with my knitting, I'm now in a really relaxed and happy stage and also like have to decide what I will cast on next. Um, probably the baby knit um, because the baby is due in July and now we have mid mid June so that should be done uh, next and then we will see. I still haven't finished my levitate wrap and stuff like that so there's still like a lot of projects um, but let's see. Um, yeah I will and here and see you in my next podcast episode with probably a lot of finished objects as you might guess from my holiday and uh, hope you enjoyed this and um, yeah th this was like interesting content I mean I didn't vlog that much but I definitely showed you all my yarn purchases um, and yeah see you next time